The health ministers decided not to remove abortion items from the medical benefits schedule. Instead, he proposed that individual health funds could apply to not pay benefits. This was, of course, not acceptable to Josie or the discussion group or well, or the Union of Australian Women. And they all collected signatures on a petition asking for no restrictions. Cabinet, probably sensing the, the opinions, wisely deferred making a decision. But the anti, uh, the pro-choice, uh, sorry, the pro-lifers uh, didn't give up. In March 1979, Conservative MP Stephen Lusher put up a motion to remove abortion from the schedule. My father, Joseph's husband, died that month, so uh, after a long illness. So Mum challenged her grief into writing to politicians, collecting the signatures on another petition, and sending information about the motion around the state. Lobbying by the women's groups resulted in a conscience vote and defeat by a House of Parliament, this is 1979, that had no female politicians. At the end of the year, Josie sold the family home and moved into the more vibrant Prince Hill, where she set up a women's office in her house. It became one of the hubs of the Newcastle women's movement in the 1980s. Meetings were held there, uh, women's groups visited, students, anyone seeking feminist information and discussion. Visit, visitors were usually given a cup of herbal tea, sometimes their first ever. Jessie at times could alienate people with her strong opinions or her heightened stress levels when she was overtired. But she was a resolute networker who invariably had a cohort of activists to campaign with and friends to party with. One of her friends had reminisced after Mum's death, um, and this is what she said. Looking back over the years that I worked at Jenny's place, Josie was always in the background with a petition, asking for volunteers for phone-ins with the many abortion debates, inviting workers to attend fundraising squares. That was Josie the feminist, a strong and fiery lioness. But when we became friends, I discovered Josie, the little kitten, who loved to play. She did also like parties. When the MLC Fred Nile, mum's you know, long-term, <laughs> bad, bad man, proposed a motion in the New South Wales Parliament that would restrict the right to abortion, Josie set up the Right to Choose Abortion Coalition. On May 28, 1982, with the Democrats MLC, Elizabeth Kirby. They organised a public meeting at Newcastle Trades Hall. Police uh, patrolled outside the entrance, expecting trouble, but there was none. And from this well-attended meeting, RCAC officially began. It set up a network with women, uni, colleges, unions, family planning association, UAW, well, International Women's Day Collective, and more. They raised funds by the well-tried methods of membership fees, raffles, picnics, and theatre parties. Dinners or barbecues at mum's, on mum's birthday every year became a tradition, and guests donated to the Right to Choose Coalition instead of giving a present. They had stalls for recruiting new members and they sold feminist posters, books, t-shirts and badges and Josie's homegrown potlucks. The, they used to raise so much money, so they used for campaigns in Newcastle, but they also used to send money to various statewide organisations as well. And Chelsea, with others, or often by herself, she gave out right to choose the future at IWD dinners, fairs, shopping centres, the uni, colleges, conferences and seminars, women voice plays at Wood Street Theatre, folk and jazz festivals, and at brothels. One time at a stall at the uni, she was left alone when the other women went to lunch. A man in black leather and boots came up and said to her, I should kill you too. She was rattled, but it didn't stop the campaign. 
She wrote letters to the media and donated books to Newcastle Regional Library. For example, abortion, the Bobby New Affair, which is still there, I checked, still available. In 1983, Jersey spoke at a seminar on women's issues organised by the East Maitland Country Women's Association. Two CWAs joined RCAC and she spoke at their regional conference in Singleton. But Mum, very unlike Bergman, the previous topic, she suffered so badly from nerves whenever she spoke in public that she avoided that task, but if she could. Never on holidays, Josie made contact with the American campaign when visiting her son John, who was working in the United States. At a party in the winter of 1986, to everyone's shock, Josie was punched by a man who had seen her post choice letters in the Newcastle Herald. She'd also been receiving some abusive phone calls, heavy breathing, phone calls and some angry letters, all about abortion. So with everyone feeling a little jittery, they adopted the name Women's Action Group for fundraising activities. Liaising with the Family Planning Association, they ran the campaign in June 98 Again, sorry, 88, against Fred Nile's unborn child protection bill. They placed ads headed abortions, a women's right to choose in the Newcastle Herald, Sydney Morning Herald, Telegraph, the Golden, the Golden Post, and the Daily Liberal in Dubbo. Wagga newspaper refused publishing. They collected signatures for weeks and sent out thousands of I Pro Choice and I Vote cards. They started using the vodogram. Josie would give the required wording to an organisation called Voter Lobby who sent telegrams or photograms to every member of a relevant house of money, of money, of power. It cost money, but it saved labour. Clover Moore wrote back, Thank you for your vodogram about Reverend Niles Bill. I believe it to be a most destructive bill, setting back the cause of women for many years. Josie was overjoyed to hear on the grapevine that Fred and I was shocked by the strength of the pro-choice campaign response. No major party supported his bill, so it was never put to the Legislative Assembly. RCAC was working efficiently as a watchdog group. In the late 1980s, at an IWD march in Newcastle, Josie was carrying the right to choose banner when she and her friend were pushed by two angry men. The police were called, but they took no action. At a different pro-choice march, a man screamed at them to go home and have children. One of the women yelled back, I've got five already. In Sydney, a uh, Josie march with the Women's Abortion Action Campaign to Parliament House, and they were booed. Women who publicly supported abortion had to be prepared to face this type of disapproval. Women like Josie, who, as I said, was game to go out on a limb. She was game to be radical. In 1996, when pro-lifer Brian Harrity held balance of power in the Senate, he pressured the federal coalition to once again consider abolishing Medicare benefits for abortion. RCAC swung into action. Letters, cars, stalls, signatures collected. Jersey, remembering the leather-clad man at the uni, was surprised when a bikey son petitioner stall in Hamilton, I think it, to her represented a change in, you know, feeling about the issue. The benefits were retained. In 2001, RCAC sent a lobbying kit around Australia at Josie's expense. Sandra Norrie, a minister in the New South Wales Parliament, responded, It's wonderful to see women stand up for what they believe, especially when such a topical issue as a woman's right to control over her own body is at stake. A topical issue never seemed to go away. My mother continued to post right to choose literature to politicians until not long before her death in, in 2007, aged 87. So in conclusion, the right to choose abortion coalition, you know, they didn't write policy and they weren't uh, 
big, you know, well-known, um, but they played an important role, I think, in the women's movement in Newcastle. Their lobbying tactics, in line with those favoured by the first wave of feminists, uh, were very effective, which was canvassing politicians, letters, petitions. Josie was not one of the movers and shakers of the world that the media latched on to, but I think she was a key uh, grassroots activist in the last three decades of the 20th century, who never wavered in the ongoing battle for women's right to state legal abortions. Thank you.